Welcome back to Inside City Hall. Following a strong performance in the opening round of the Republican presidential debate last week, former business executive Carly Fiorita has seen her star rise. She's starting to gain in national polls, even ranking in the top five in Iowa, of course, the site of the first caucuses in the nation. Fiorina is now putting down roots across the country, and that means appointing co-chairs for her campaign here in New York, one of whom is my next guest, former U.S. Congresswoman Nan Hayworth, who represented parts of the Hudson Valley when she was in Washington. She joins us now to talk about her candidate. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank so you. there is a long time before this election, and there are a lot of candidates on your side. Why Carly Fiorina? Well, you know, uh, Carly actually got in touch with me in December. I had met her last fall. Uh, when she came to campaign for Rob Estorino, and I just thought she was terrific. And when she started seriously running for president, although before she announced, um, I was more than happy in December of 2014 to sign up because I knew that Carly Fiorina has uh, what it takes to be our leader and be our candidate. Well, what does it take? It takes intelligence. It takes resolve. It takes conviction. It takes experience as someone who rose from secretary to become the chief executive officer, the first female CEO in a Fortune top 20 company, she has had to, as she has said, sit down and negotiate with the world's leaders. She knows them personally. She knows technology. She knows bloated bureaucracies and how to pare them down to size. These are exactly the kinds of experience, the kind of life story, uh, the kinds of expertise that we need in our chief executive these days. You know, one thing that people note about her, and um, it's, frankly, it's kind of refreshing that you didn't bring that up first, is her gender. Is yeah. you know, She stands out, frankly, because she's the only Republican candidate who is a woman. But she had an interesting quote that was in uh, the Times today. She did an interview. And she said, as a woman, I am insulted when I hear somebody talk about women's issues. She adds, every issue is a woman's issue. I guess my question is, how much should voters take into account someone's gender when they are voting? I agree with Carly. I think it is uh, important that all of us recognize that uh, issues that may not have been labeled as, quote, women's issues, unquote, very much affect the quality of life for women, for families. You know, women tend to be the ones who make the decisions for families in this country. That's true. Women tend to be the ones who run small businesses or local entrepreneurs. In a down economy, these are the folks who are the most affected across our country. Women, female entrepreneurs, families. But having said that, again, those economic issues affect all of us. But no issue should be couched strictly as a woman's issue, because all of them are relevant to us. But one issue that's very important to women, and to men as well, mm -hmm. is paid maternity leave. Yeah. And that is something that she does not support on a federal level. Can you talk at all about how you feel about that issue and, and why you feel she is not supporting that? Well, and as, as Carly has said, you know, the, the uh, idea of having maternity leave makes all the sense in the world. And she supports it, and personally, I support it as well. But for the federal government to dictate to businesses, including those hardest hit by these kind of rules, which are small businesses, I know, I was a small businesswoman myself, uh, it, you know, the problem is when the federal government comes in and dictates these terms, they take away from other opportunities for employers to do good things for their employees, whether they're parents, uh, you know, fathers, mothers, daughters, sons of uh, relatives who may need help. So it, it's too limiting. It's too, uh, it's too restricting on our businesses to, and, and on our employers, more to the point, uh, to have the federal government require that kind of thing. One thing that Carly Fiorina has also talked at length about is her opposition to some of Donald Trump's comments. I'm wondering if you are perhaps embarrassed that this is right now the front runner in your party? You know what, Josh, this is a very vigorous primary process. And I have friends who are very enthusiastic about Mr. Trump and about his bluntness. So I think that he has added a lot of energy uh, to this discourse. Uh, I have certainly, and I share this with Carly, I have disagreed with uh, various uh, uh, ways in which he's characterized uh, folks who uh, question 
what he's saying, what he said in the past, or his, uh, uh, his record. Uh, I don't think that that's uh, the kind of quality we want in our leader. Uh, but as Carly has said as well, he is tapping into a deep frustration with the direction in which this country is going, with what our middle class and working families are feeling every day, which is that they've been left behind and they've been betrayed. They are not the ones who have benefited from uh, whatever recovery we can call, uh, you know, what our country's been going through. They are frustrated. They do feel they've been uh, dealt with dishonestly, and Donald Trump taps into that. Let's take a listen to something that Ben Carson said last night. Dr. Ben Carson, uh, sitting where you were, he's, of course, running also for the Republican nomination, and I asked him uh, about Donald Trump. I want to get your response to that. Is there anything about Donald Trump that has offended you in these last few weeks? Uh, no. There's nothing, not his comments about Megyn Kelly, not his comments about John McCain, um, not being uh, well, as much and, of a war and, hero. Uh, in, in both of the cases that you just cited, uh, with John McCain, he said that John McCain is a war hero. He, he came back and said that on multiple occasions. So I don't know exactly what's offensive about that. He says what he was saying was misinterpreted. He said the same thing about Megyn Kelly. Thoughts? Well, Dr. Carson is a, a man, as we all know, with a very generous heart. Um, I think he is uh, emphasizing the best <laughs> in that he's giving uh, Mr. Trump the benefit of the doubt. I, I have to agree with Carly, and I have great admiration for Dr. Carson in so many ways, but I, I agree with Carly. Uh, there are some things that uh, the leader of the free world and the president of our country should not say. And, and should be able to refrain from saying. And it's not hard to identify those divisive, bitter comments. Uh, and that's really not uh, what we want to see in our leader. Can we expect that she will be the strongest anti-Trump voice, so to speak? I think she'll be one of the most credible uh, voices uh, as an alternative to Mr. Trump, particularly given her business experience. I mean, this is someone who... Uh, you know, in, in full consideration, didn't start out with the family business that she then grew, fair enough, uh, but she started out as a secretary. Mm -hmm. And actively, through determined and hard and smart work, rose in a very challenging corporate environment because she knows how to negotiate, how to bring out the best in the people who work for her, how to identify opportunities, and how to make things work. And that's a great quality. She certainly is going to be asked questions about her time at HP, which is completely yeah. fair. The fact that she uh, oversaw 30,000 layoffs at HP, that there was a very precipitous stock drop uh, in the price of the stock drop, and also that she was forced out by the board of directors there. So is her experience at HP as stellar as she would want us to believe? Well, as uh, I believe Carly has pointed out and others have pointed out, Steve Jobs uh, also uh, was fired at one point in his career, as were many other uh, very talented and uh, great leaders. So uh, in the world of business, uh, you, know, it's, uh, you know, it's not softball. So Carly Fiorina, uh, had to make some very challenging decisions. She did so unflinchingly. She did so uh, with uh, what a lot of uh, folks in hindsight uh, have said. After that turbulent time was over, a lot of folks have looked at her tenure at HP and what she did at HP and said, you know what? Uh, some of the uh, things that uh, members of that board objected to at the time, actually, in, in retrospect, they have uh, said, you know what, Carly was right about this, including Tom Perkins, who was uh, one of the board members most vocally opposed to her. He ended up supporting her for Senate. All right, well, let's shift gears in the last minute or so that we have and ask about you. What have you been up to, aside from uh, supporting Carly Fiorina? You're a former congresswoman. You're also yes. an MD, um, yes. represented uh, parts of the Hudson Valley. Yes. Tell us, I imagine you're going to be busy with this, but what else are you doing? Well, I've been uh, going around the Hudson Valley, uh, you know, supporting good friends whom I think are uh, worthy representatives of the folks here in New York, including me. And one of them, Assemblyman Kieran Lawler, is a fellow co-chair uh, for Carly for America here in New York. So I'm doing all I can in supporting folks like Kieran Lawler and in supporting Carly Fiorina. 
uh, to fulfill a mission that I felt I've been on for a long, long time, which is to assure uh, that everyone who cares so much and deserves uh, so much opportunity from uh, this country will be able to have that. Okay. We'll come back. Thanks so much for being I'd here. I'd love to. Thank okay. you.